Solving linear equations. The whole idea behind solving equations is finding a value of the variable that makes a true statement. That's what a solution is. The solution in this case for the first one would be finding the value of x that would make this true. So when I look at this equation, I could say that if what do I add to 4 to get 7, it would be a 3 to make it a true statement. But we're going to get equations that are pretty big that I just can't stare at it to get the solution. So we have a process. So I, whatever I do to one side, I could do to the other side mathematically, and the value of the equation will remain the same. So if I want x alone, which is my goal, I have to get rid of the plus 4. I want this to go to 0. In order to go to 0, if I subtract 4, that will give me a 0. I will get rid of it. Because it's an equation, whatever I do to one side, I do to the other side. So that goes to 0. I get x equals 3. Over here, I have an equation. I want the value of x that would make this true. Something that minus 2 gives me 6. I could do it in my head, or I have a process. I want x alone. x is not alone. So to get rid of something, I do the opposite operation, which is add 2. I add 2. I'm going to get x equals 8. Over here, I have a minus 3 equals negative 5. I want a alone. I want to get rid of the negative 3. So it's math. It's either add, subtract, multiply, or divide. If I add 3, that will go to 0. I'll get a alone. I'll add 3 to the other side. These have to be a perfect match. I get a equals subtract, take the sign of the larger, negative 2. My variable doesn't always have to be on the left side. It could be on the right side. But the concept is the same. I want x alone. It's not alone. I have to get rid of the negative 4. So I'm going to add 4. What I do to one side, I do to the other side. So I get x equals 14. So now, let's say I have something like this. 2x equals 6. This is very different from this. These are attached by addition or subtraction. This is attached by multiplication. So the goal is the same. I want x alone. x is not alone. I see it's multiplied by 2. I want to get x alone. That's my goal. So to get rid of the 2, I can't go and subtract 2 because I can't subtract 2 from a 2x. They're not like terms. So this is 2 times x. If I use the opposite operation, which is divide, they will go to 1, and I will get a 1x. What I do to one side, I do to the other side. So x equals 3. Let's add 8x equals negative 24. I want x alone, but this time I have x times x. So to get rid of it, I divide by the coefficient of x. Unlike signs, I get x is negative 3. The x could be on the other side. Negative 100 equals 10x. The goal is I want x alone. Have to get rid of the 10. It's attached by times, so I divide. So I get x equals negative 10. The only thing that might be confusing is if I have a negative coefficient. Let's say I have negative 4x equals 12. I have to divide by 4 because that'll give me x alone. But if you notice, if I just divide by 4 in division, unlike signs gives me a negative, I'll end up with a negative x. When they say solve for x, they want to know what positive x is. So. I would divide by negative 4, because that way like signs are plus, and I end up with what a positive x is. 
What I do to one side, I do to the other side. So x is negative 3. We'll do another one. Let's say I have negative 5x equals negative 10. I want what x is. I divide by the coefficient of x, including its sign. What you do to one side, you do to the other. So I have x is positive 2. So what's different? In addition, subtraction. To solve, we use the opposite sign because I want it to go to 0. In multiplication and division, I'm going to use the same sign because I want it to go to a positive 1. So let's try a couple. I have x plus 5 equals 10. I want x alone. So I have to decide how to get rid of the 5. In this case, I would subtract 5. So I'm going to get x equals positive 5. In this case, this is 5 times x. So I divide by 5. It's different. I get x equals 2. In this case, this is a trash attached by addition and subtraction. So that's how I get rid of it. I add 3 to both sides. Remember, it has to be add 3. I mean, if you just put a minus 3 there, you're going to get a minus 6. The idea is it has to go to 0. So now I get x equals 21. This one, this is a times. I divide by minus 3. In other words, again, in division we divide by same sign. Addition and subtraction is opposite sign. Opposite sign will give us a 0. This will give us a plus x, which is what we want. I get minus 6. This is attached by addition and subtraction, so I'm going to add 8 to both sides. So I get x equals 32. This one, it's attached by a times. So I'm going to divide by minus 8. So I get x is negative 3. The only one you have to be careful of is if I have something like this, negative x equals 5, and they say solve for x, we're not done. Right now, this is solve for negative x. Again, you have to know if there's no coefficient, a 1 is understood. So I do the same thing, divide by negative 1, and I get x equals negative 5. Let's say I have negative a equals negative 4, and I have to solve for a. Right now, this is solved for negative a. I have to solve for positive a. I have to know that's a 1. So I divide each side by negative 1. Like signs are plus, so I get a equals 4. Now we just have to deal with little fractions. Let's say I have x divided by 3 equals 10. And I want to solve for x, which means I want x alone. x is not alone. It's divided by 3. I can't add 3 to this. So what I want to do is get rid of this 3. If I do the opposite operation of how this 3 is attached to the x, I can get rid of it. This is attached by division. So if I multiply by 3 and I multiply by 3, that will work. Any whole number, I can put over 1. Now I have multiplication of fractions. I can cancel. 3 into 3, 1. 3 into 3, 1. I get x over 1, which is just x. So I get x equals 30. Let's say I have x over 5 equals 3. I want to solve for x. It's x divided by 5. So I can multiply each side by 5. 5 into 5, 1. 5 into 5, 1. I get x equals 15. Let's say I have x divided by 2 equals 8. I want x alone, so I multiply each side by 2. I get x equals 16. 
So the only thing that can be a little harder is if I have a fraction with a numerator and denominator. Let's say I have 4 fifths x equals 16. I could do this in two steps. In other words, I could multiply each side by 5, and then I could divide by 4. But we usually do it in one step. Notice that if I want to, if I do it the same way, if I covered up this 5, anytime you have a fraction, you can make it a whole number and you can probably figure out the rule. If I had 4x equals 16, you would know what to do. You would divide by 4. So, if I had to come up with a rule, it would be divide by the coefficient of x. So I want to divide by 4 fifths. In fractions, if I would have a fraction here and I want to divide it by four-fifths, let's say this was one-third, what would I do first? You have to change this to a times and multiply by reciprocal, which is when we flip a fraction. If I take, if I flip a fraction, it's called the reciprocal. So anytime I want to divide by a fraction, I multiply by reciprocal. That would be my rule. So now, what I really want to do is divide each side by four-fifths, which is multiplying by reciprocal. So if I multiply by the reciprocal, it will take any fraction to the whole number one, which is what we want. So if I multiply this by 5 fourths, I multiply that by 5 fourths. Any whole number, I put over 1. This all cancels out to 1. 4 into 4, 1. 4 into 4, 1. 5 into 5, 1. 5 into 5, 1. I get 1x. I want to cancel. You have to use the same number twice. 4 will go into both. So it's 4 into 4, 1, 4 into 16, 4. 4 times 5 is 20, 1 times 1 is 1, but 20 over 1 is 20. All right, we're going to try a few of these. Let's say I have 2 thirds x equals 8. To get rid of a fraction in an equation, I'm going to multiply by reciprocal. It will take that fraction to 1. So I'm going to multiply this side by 3 halves. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. Any whole number, you put over 1. I cancel. 3 into 3, 1. 3 into 3, 1. 2 into 2, 1. 2 into 2, 1. I'm left with x. I cancel. 2 into 2, 1. 2 into 8, 4. 3 times 4 is 12. All right, we'll do another one. 5, 6, x equals 45. I want to get rid of a fraction in an equation. I multiply by reciprocal. Multiply by 6 over 5. Multiply by 6 over 5. Cancel. 5 into 5, 1. 5 into 5, 1. 6 and 6, 1. 6 and 6, 1. That was the purpose. I get a 1x. I cancel. 5 into 5, 1. 5 into 45, 9. 6 times 9, 54. All right, we'll do one more. Let's make it 3 8 x equals 18. To get rid of a fraction in an equation, I multiply by reciprocal. Multiply by 8 thirds. Multiply by 8 thirds. This all cancels out to 1x. Any whole number you put over 1. 3 into 3, 1. 3 into 18, 6. 6 times 8, 48.